You know the vibes. Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K24. And tonight, it's myself, my Mootsy, but the big three is not here. I took a leaf out of Kendrick's book. There's no big three. It's just big me. Because Scott and BJ in Chicago handling some business right now. So I'm going to talk you through the games that happened tonight. And those of you who are in the UK, you may have tuned in to my coverage of the Pacers versus Knicks game number four in Indianapolis from the BBC iPlayer feed or BBC3 or wherever you saw it on TV. And if you tuned into that, well, you can skip past this segment and go straight into the Nuggets versus Timberwolves. But if you missed that game, what a game it was for the Indiana Pacers. They absolutely destroyed the New York Knicks. In this one, the Knicks could not hit a shot early in the game, and they came away with a 121-89 win against New York. And, you know, the one advantage the Knicks have about being blown out is they played a, like a low in the playoff minutes in terms of Josh Hart played 24, um, Devin Chenzo played 32, Jalen Brunson played 32. Now, Jalen Brunson was struggling, you could see, with the injuries, and he finished with only 18 points. Their highest scorer for New York was Alec Burks off the bench with 20, who played a lot of garbage time because the game was pretty much garbage time up until what the end of the first quarter maybe and it's so hard doing tv because they're constantly telling you in your ear to keep the fans tuned in and not turn it off because it's a blowout and you've got to think of ways to make fans want to watch but we did it we got the show done it was pretty good vibes uh, but the Pacers shout out to them Tyrese Halliburton finished with 20 points six rebounds five assists Miles Turner 13 Pascal Scappa 14 they didn't have huge numbers but they didn't need to because the game was already won pretty early on they bench got involved as well um, McConnell had 15 Obi Toppin had 14 Isaiah Jackson had 10 and it was a great confidence building win for the Pacers. The game so far in the series have been pretty close and they managed to get a blowout win here. So shout out to them and you can see the minutes of the Knicks really starting to take its toll. BJ and I said it at the start of the series. It's only a matter of time and the longer this series go, the more it favours the Indiana Pacers and you can see their depth now really shining through and the starters for the Knicks struggling of course without OG Ananobi tonight and I don't know if he's going to be back for the next one. I do know he still can't run at the moment. He's just doing exercises in the pool. So we're going to see if he's going to be back in time but without OG I fear that, you know, this streak for the New York Knicks may just be over. There's really not too much to talk about in that game. The Pacers played great defense, which isn't something you hear a lot about the Indiana Pacers, but they played a great defensive strategy and offensively they were sharing the basketball, getting out in transition and doing what they do. Now let's talk about the Nuggets and the Timberwolves. The Denver Nuggets won game number four and that tied the series at two games apiece, much like the Knicks and Pacers series is now tied at two games apiece. And this one was on the road in Minneapolis. But Jamal Murray, 19 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds. The Joker doing three-time MVP things. That's 35 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals. Aaron Gordon was electric. 27 points. He was 11 of 12 from the field. He hit two threes. And you know if Aaron Gordon hits threes, the Nuggets are more likely they're not going to win that game. Their big three really stepped up. Justin Holiday, revelation off the bench with 10 points. And uh, Christian Braun played fantastically in this one with 11 points. Over for the Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards had a fantastic game. 44 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists with 2 steals. I wish BJ was here to react to that but he was let down by his teammates none of them scored more than the 15 points that Mike Conley added to the contribution Rudy Gobert had a stinker we'll talk about that in a sec Carl Anthony Towns 38 minutes 13 points and 12 boards now let's break a few things down here for you guys the Timberwolves were aggressive early Anthony Edwards came out with the energy and really set the tone for them on both sides of the floor the Wolves got up to a 23-12 lead early on um but then the Nuggets got back into the game by getting stops, which prevents... And when you get a stop, it prevents the Timberwolves' defense from being able to pick you up full court. So because they managed to get some stops and get out in transition themselves, it allowed them to play easier offense and find some rhythm. And then their rhythm really started heating up towards the end of the first half. There was a possession where they were on a little hot streak. Michael Porter Jr. scores a dunk on a fast break. Then a few seconds left on the clock. The Timberwolves try to inbound the ball long. It goes all the way past the halfway line where Jamal Murray intercepts it and shoots a past half court buzzer being three just before half time, and everyone went absolutely crazy. Now, I did get a little bit worried for the Nuggets as Jokic picked up his fourth foul with seven minutes to go in a third, but Mike Mellon trusted him to play with those four fouls for a little bit, took him out of the game for a stretch, and they managed to hold down a lead for a bit. Um, but there were too many possessions in the fourth quarter for the Symbols trying to get back into this game where Anthony Edwards wasn't involved. And Rudy Gobert, man, down the stretch, he once again made the money sign at the referees. Um, I, don't, I don't know why he's doing that again because it costs him 100 grand every time he does it, but he's a hell of a lot richer than me, so whatever, Rudy. Um, he, he had a couple offensive fouls. He um, What a really interesting possession was, he tried to post up Jokic, 
And uh, Jokic was obviously in foul trouble, and that's why they went to it. But Jokic just simply pulled the chair. And what that means is when someone's posting up on you, you just take a step back and you let their momentum carry them. And Rudy stumbles and gets called for a travel. And then Rudy bricked two huge free throws down the stretch. And there were a few other plays down the stretch where the defensive communication wasn't there for the Timbers. There was one play where they looked like they were asleep. They were trying to huddle up in the middle of the court off, the, off an out-of-bounds play. And, and Jokic just inbounds the ball to Christian Braun, who's right near the hoop. And he has fouled going up for the bucket. So... It was it was bad defensively for the Timberwolves there. It's interesting because Nas Reed only played 18 minutes, but Carl Anthony Towns played so badly. I wonder if that's going to change in the next game. And I feel like they could have won this game if they just had less involvement from Rudy Gobert. And that's not me being a hater. I know if BJ was here, he'd be laughing. But if Rudy Gobert had his minutes replaced by Nas Reed, I think the Timberwolves could have come away with a win. Um, the Wolves actually won when Anthony Edwards was on the court. He played 45 minutes. They won those minutes by five. They lost the two minutes and 40 seconds that Anthony Edwards sat by 13 points. Now, let's talk about some of the adjustments here on the technical side of things. Now, we know that Cat had been doing an excellent job in this series guarding Nikola Jokic, and they would have Rudy Gobert guarding Aaron Gordon, kind of sagging off him and being a Roma so he can block Jokic when he gets into the paint or try and alter his shots. So what they did here was they got Christian Brown. Uh, I said Braun earlier, please forgive me. Um, they had Christian Brown screening Carl Anthony Towns before Jokic was set a screen for Jamal Murray in the pick and roll, which meant that Cat had to recover out to Jokic to give Jokic that bit of separation. Murray was making really quick reads out of the pick and roll, finding them. And Aaron Gordon, like I said before, when he's hitting threes, he then can space the floor rather than being in the dunker spot, which allows Rudy to just camp out in the paint. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened in that game. I think the, the real winners for today, not only the uh, Denver Nuggets, but also OG Ananobi, because when he goes into that free agency meeting this summer with the Knicks, he can just show them footage from the 28 points he scored in Game 3, what he did on defense, and then Game 4 and what happened to the Knicks tonight. Now, that's two matchups tonight. I'm going to keep it nice and brief because it's just me and I don't want to do another rant. I did a three-and-a-half-hour TV show today. Um, but tonight's games, the Celtics and the Cavaliers and the Thunder and the Mavericks. This is an important one for the Celtics. If they want to really establish themselves as championship contenders, I need them to go and get the win. I know Cleveland, after the way the last game went, have got a lot of things that they can work on, but I need the Celtics to come out and set a tone from early. I need Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum to be aggressive. I need them to move the basketball. And if your shot's not falling, especially Derek White, if the shot's not falling, I get you want to keep shooting it to find your rhythm back, but maybe it's just time you pass on the ball. Let's handle business. Do you know what I mean? They're up 2-1. Let's make that 3-1 and close it out at home. Um, for the Thunder and the Mavericks, I've got to take a sip of my drink. For the Thunder and the Mavericks, though, that's going to be an interesting one. That's going, to, that's, that's going to be a very interesting matchup because there are adjustments that OKC can make that we've spoken about before. Less minutes for Josh Giddy, maybe take him out of the starting lineup and um, and maybe play in the big Bismarck Biombo alongside Chet Holmgren to give them some size, to give them some rebounds, to give them some interior presence, to give them some toughness. I feel like they've just been out toughed in this series against Dallas. And also, you've got to continue to monitor Luka Doncic's leg or knee or ankle or whatever the injury is as Lou Dort continues to assault him with foul after foul and Lou Dort is up there now we talked about Shea's flopping before on this show Lou Dort is up there with one of the biggest floppers in the entire NBA so I'm going to be keeping an eye on that I expect the Mavericks to win at home uh, but that would mean they take a 3-1 series lead <laughs> which is a uh, Bad news for OKC. So it's going to be interesting. Let me know in the Discord who you guys think are winning tonight's games. The link is in the description. I'm going to be more active in that chat moving forwards. Um, or hit us on social media at Hoop Genius, wherever you want to find us. Um, but yeah, that's just a quick update episode from me. And I guarantee as soon as I finish recording this here at 5 a.m. in my hotel room, because the TV studio is in Manchester and I do not live in Manchester, I guarantee you BJ rings me now and tells me he's ready to record. Um, that's just the way the world goes. But I appreciate you guys tuning in for this quick update anyway. This is the Hoop Genius Podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts from. And most importantly, until next time, get buckets.